for Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna in conversation with Policy, discussing uh, being a revolutionary or freedom fighter in the 15 wasted years. So you do not really answer your own question. How does one leave out uh, being a freedom fighter or revolutionary today? What is to be done, Professor? Someone asked me this the other day who is a former cabinet minister who said my article was wonderful, but uh, I don't answer that question, sort of question that you've put. And the answer isn't for me alone to give. What I've tried to do in the article is to identify a number of sectors who can be involved in the democratic recovery of South Africa, business professionals, faith-based organizations, charitable groups, big ones like Gift of the Givers and smaller ones, uh, unions and youths and all sorts of others. And they have to get together, discuss and work out a program. I'm not saying there mustn't be elections and these parties must be uh, dissolved or abolished, but what I'm saying is you need something more than that which relates to what I said in the other interview, which is the membership of organizations. And and I'm now not talking about the ANC mainly because I think the ANC is dying as a a popular organization. But popular forces must also be involved in negotiating a way forward, identifying what are the pressing issues of the day. We need clean water. Clean water is a basic human right, but it's not just something in textbooks. It's something for which people are dying today with cholera. It's something for which people are going thirsty to bed at night because they can't afford bottled waters or the tankers that are present in some places too far away and too heavy to carry water for some old people who are not being looked after. So the answer to that question is a question which we all have to answer in relation to where we are. In my case, because I am uh, an academic by background, I write and I try to contribute that way. People who are journalists report, and they must report uh, like Paul Mashatile's VIP people did this uh, alleged Uh, or actual, you can see it's actual assault on people. It's important that the media get there. Luckily, a public-spirited citizen took a video of it. Wherever we are, we do different things, and we must do it in a way that contributes to recovery of our democratic hopes and promises. Do you not think uh, that there is a large element of romanticization in your using or reviving words like uh, freedom fighter, revolutionary, etc. in this series? I feel that people talk of these words with contempt. Uh, they, they, they shy to say they are revolutionaries or they afraid that people will laugh if they say they're freedom fighters. If you are a freedom fighter, it means you are a fighter for freedom. Mandela, Sisulu, Slovo, Ruth First, Abraham Fisher, Moses Kotani were all freedom fighters and revolutionaries. By revolutionary, I don't mean they wanted to create chaos and violence. They just want to change South Africa into one that belonged to all who live in it, no matter who, what their color, gender, sexual orientation, and whatever. So that I think the word revolution doesn't just mean violence. And what we had in 1994, in my view, was a revolution which should have been continuing. Instead of continuing, it's going backwards, but that's a separate question. But I believe you can use the word and I believe I'm. I think, without while I sit at my desk, I'm still a revolutionary, but and I'm still a freedom fighter, but I'm not a freedom fighter with a gun, and I'm not trying to overthrow the government of the day. And so, I believe that people must have something, must define those words in a way 
where people want to be associated with them because their literal meaning is is great. You know, they to be free be free is a very good word. And revolution it depends what is its character. So lastly, Professor, you are a person who has spent much of your life uh, communicating what you call doctrine. And as a political leader, you headed a ANC political education and now as an intellectual. How can you now say that doctrine is not relevant uh, to solving the problems of today? What I'm reacting against is that when you speak about, I use the word betrayal, and I'm saying that betrayal means that you no longer have a connection or care about the masses who used to be the core base of the ANC and the liberation movement in general. Uh, so what I'm saying is that isn't a question of do you believe in Marx, Engels, Lenin, uh, John Stuart Mill, or uh, Immanuel Kant, or whatever it is. It's not things from books that have led to the problems we've got now. What are the, the what has led to the problems we've got now is that people don't care. They see people starving. They don't care. They steal money, which is meant to go to the people who suffered from the floods in KZN. And they take that. Some of the, the people from the local uh, government who were supposed to deliver supplies to them took some of those supplies. Now, that sort of conduct is not something that you will be able to deal with by looking at doctrine. Doctrine is belief systems. Belief systems, that's why I'm saying it comes from books and from great thinkers. And I read those thinkers, but what I've learned in recent years comes from other sources. Uh, from so I'm not a believer, but it does come partly from some theological sources as well. And some of them actually address these questions of compassion and empathy uh, in a more direct way than some of the liberation movement and communist writings, although it's part of their writings as well. But in recent times, it's disappeared. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna in conversation with policy discussing being a revolutionary or freedom fighter in the 15 wasted years, part seven.